So today for 4 Minute Friday, I wanted to just take a couple minutes and talk about something that's kind of been on my mind and, and confusing. And if it's as confusing to you as it has been to me, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. And that's the topic of registered livestock. Should I buy registered livestock for my homestead farm? Now, before you even can answer that, you have to ask yourself the question of, am I gonna raise this livestock just for consumption or am I gonna breed it? Am I gonna breed it for consumption? And, and so that you have, once you've got the answer to those questions, then you can go ahead and answer the question of, do I buy registered livestock or not? And so for example, when I first was getting cattle, I was just buying bull calves and then I would steer them after a month or so, raise them for two years and put them in the freezer. There was absolutely no breeding going on. So therefore there was absolutely no value and when I bought those bull calves to pay for registration of those bull calves, it, it made no sense because they, they, I wasn't furthering the lineage of those bull calves. They were, that was the end of the line for them. Now, since then I, I've got a, a Jersey, a, a purebred Jersey milk cow, and she was registered with American Jersey Cow Association. And I bred her through artificial insemination. And so I was able to choose the sire and you can look back through the records and find out what her qualities are. Then you can kind of look for the qualities of a sire that you want to mix in and hopefully you get some of the best of those qualities with your calf. And that's the whole point. Well, if you've got registered livestock, you have the advantage of being able to go through those herd books. And as long as the, as long as the, the breeder before you has kept good herd books and registered all those animals, that's, that's the caveat to that. So, but, but most breeders, are honest as far as what their herd books say and what the, say, the association says. So once once you start breeding those animals, trying to find the traits that you want, that, that's when it becomes important to register your animals. Another example of that is some of my sheep came from registered stock, so their parents were registered. And even though the sheep I've got, the ewes, aren't registered, and when I breed them, unfortunately, the registration is lost because I don't have the papers on these ewes. Their parents were registered, these ewes aren't, so therefore, you can't go back and, and add back to it later. It's not, it's not something that's really easily done. So once you get to the point where you are actually breeding to select traits, desired traits, and you want to pass those along, that's when you want to start thinking about buying registered livestock and keeping up the, the registration papers of that livestock. It's the, the, whole, the whole point of it is to breed for an improvement plan. The other advantage of that, and it kind of goes hand in hand, is you're going to pay a little bit more for that. You're going to pay a little bit more for that initial purchase of the, of the registered animal, but there, but by the same token, when you sell the, the offspring, you should be able to sell them at a higher rate also. Now keep in mind, once you start selling purely registered animals, your market share is gonna be a little bit more, um, it's gonna be a little bit more narrowed out because a lot of homestead farmers, like I initially was, they don't care about papers and so they don't wanna pay the extra money for papered animals. A lot of times too, if you get into the point where there's a glut, there's just a lot of animals out there and it doesn't matter if they're registered or not registered, they're still not worth much. So you kind of take a risk there. But I think basically you just need to think about what am I gonna, what's, what's my ultimate game plan for these animals? Am I just gonna put them in the freezer? Am I gonna stop the lineage right there? Or am I gonna try to breed for some desired characteristics and then sell those as you know a, a better animal down the line? My, my brother always had really nice cows. He had Hereford cows. They were always really nice cows. A lot of people wanted his cows because they were nice cows, but they weren't registered, so you had nothing to fall back on. You couldn't say, these animals are registered. This is the stock. These are the traits they have. It really makes it difficult at that point. So I really hope that this has been helpful because that has just been the giant mystery for me to try to sort that out. And if you have any questions, or comments, I would really love to hear from you down below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'd be honored if you would consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks a lot and we'll talk to you next week.